Hi guys, welcome to Code Android. Hi guys, so finally today we'll be learning about the MVVM example, the model view view model pattern, which I taught you in the last lecture. Introduction to it. Uh, we'll also see about the retrofit, how we use the retrofit library to consume the API responses from the uh, web, the JSON response, and then pass it using a JSON converter factory. We'll also learn about view binding. So what is view binding? We'll learn here today. And also about the, how we use the repositories pattern. So last lecture, if you have not seen, I'll put the link in the description and the end of this video. You can check that. Uh, I have given the brief introduction on MVVM, why MVVM, why you use uh, the MVVM patterns, uh, what is the benefit over other architecture designs. So in the last class, uh, we have learned about this structure, the data patterns. Uh, sorry, the uh, the folder structure. So here, if you see the the package name is the com dot app dot whatever your package name, and after that we have three packages: data layer, the view models, and the views. In the data we have model, network, and repositories. So in model, uh, we need to have our data model or the POJO class in Java. How we know Java as a POJO class? Here we'll be having a data class. In the network, we'll be having the API responses or the interface for the APIs. We'll be using a retrofit library for this. Uh, we'll be using repositories here. Uh, so repositories are basically the way how we call the network and the repository for that. View models, yes, again, view models come as MVVM patterns. So we'll be using a view model class here. And views. Views will be having two, again, two packages for adapters and UI. So adapters will be having our recycler view adapter. We'll learn about it in a short while. UI will be holding activities and fragments. In activities, we'll be having our main activity. So this is the basic structure of the MVVM. Uh, if you have not seen the last lecture again, I'll put the link there. You can go and check the introduction to MVVM, how I explained the data, uh, the pattern for this architecture uh, should be. So now uh, let's go to our layout and do some modifications. So here we'll have a recycler view. So recycler view, if you have not, uh, Add it anytime before so you can add it using a gradle so you go to your gradle and make sure you have this dependency implementation android x recycler view recycler view 1.3.2 you can have any other versions you want whichever versions is available to your uh, studio you can use that or this is the latest one now coming back to the design we have a padding of 10 dp of this height and width and we have a match parent and wrap container i've given id for recycler view same way we have to use it here so we'll be uh, using that now so our uh, main activity is having that now uh, for view bindings as i mentioned so we have this build.gradle file in here uh, you have this block called build features so in here you will be having maybe compose or something else uh, just make sure you have this thing called view binding equals true so in that way you enable the view binding so view bindings are basically whatever you're designing it gets binded to your layouts you don't have to instantiate it further so i'll explain you how we do that so first of all globally uh, we'll assign a private late initialization var so that's like you are initialized later and i'll use a binding object of activity main binding so once you do that your view gets binded to this object, your this view. And uh, now we'll be adding our uh, recycler view as we have already uh, added in the layout. So what I'll do is I'll use the binding object as I mentioned here, and I'll add recycler view, and I'll give a layout manager to it. So what's a layout manager? It's basically whatever you are showing in and rendering in your view for the recycler view so you need to add that uh in that uh in that way so the layout, layout manager is like linear or horizontal so you can set the layout manager so you can set it like this and then you put it like linear layout manager so you want a linear layout so you can add it using linear layout manager okay now uh, once that is done uh, we'll be using again uh, our layout to design our recycler view template so 
we have designed the main activity which will be holding our recycler view uh, childs the children's now we'll be adding one more view that is uh, the recycler view layout you can name it anything you want i'll just name it as recycler view layout here we'll be um, adding the image and the text so we'll be basically fetching the data from a url where a url stands for uniform resource locator if you don't know doesn't know that so url is used to fetch the data and the query and the endpoints so basically this is the response i can show you this response will be getting in a json format so how you can see this in a json format is like you can go over the chrome and type json view online and go on the online json viewer you can paste the your response and you can go to viewer and you see here these are the objects so basically uh when you go here you will be seeing this json okay this is the array list so it's the array and this is the list the list of objects this is index one index zero of objects and index one of objects these are called indexes the numbers and the curly braces inside whatever the objects these are called json objects these are objects have key value pairs these are like map or some uh hash map or key value so it holds key and a value key and a value so whenever you want to fetch something so you want to get the key and corresponding value of it and you want to show that in your device okay so that's uh json and uh, here we want to show some image so because our response has a uh, image a url this one so we need to show it an image and a text so i want to show the image and i want to show the name simple so you don't want to show all of that you can show all of that if you want but for this lecture i'll just show the image and the name so now uh here so i'll be showing you how we can design this so for this you can put it as a match parent and you can put the height as to be like 200 dp and put the id to be as uh, image view okay so and i'll put a default image as ic launcher so that uh, the image knows it's here now i want to add a text view to it in the bottom as i mentioned the name of the images so i'll put as um width as match parent and i'll height as i'll give as wrap content okay and then i'll put the text alignment to be center and then i'll give a margin top to be 5 dp and then i'll put a text which is a default name and i'll put a text appearance a style something like a style of text appearance so i'll put add style and i'll put uh, the style to be something large so text appearance dot app compat dot large okay in that way our text is appearing large and it's between uh bottom of the image now that is done so now we'll uh design it uh design our um view model class so let's go to our view model class here in this package and then click new kotlin class file here we'll be showing and naming it as uh, heroes uh, view model because we're showing the name of the heroes from marvel characters and uh, here we'll be uh, doing the view model okay so i'll name it as class heroes view model constructor okay so why we use constructor here because i want to use this in my view model factory so i'll come to that why it's why we're using view model factory uh, first of all in a constructor we're going to use the objects for the repository that you're going to design so we'll have a repository named heroes or repo and the repository are basically used for fetching the data and collecting it as a response either callback 
for success or a failure so you don't need to you know, worry about uh, your uh, retrofit response again everything is taken care of by the repository so what we'll do is we'll create a repository here in here the repositories view model we'll create a new kotlin class file and then name it as heroes repo and in this repository what we'll be doing is um, okay so we'll be adding this with again a constructor inside this uh, what I'll be doing is I'll add the retrofit service class so what I'll do is I'll create the retrofit service class again so I'll use uh, retrofit service object and a retrofit okay service and inside this I'll call a function to get all the data so I'll name it as get heroes data and I'll pass it to the retrofit service object and I'll get all the heroes so this method is going to be used in the network package where we'll be designing uh, our interface class so here again I'll name it as uh, interface I'll name it as retrofit service okay and I'll do one more interface named as heroes API so in this API we'll have our get or post method for our retrofit so retrofit is used to fetch data and for that we need an interface so retrofit has like get post push so last class i have taught you about retrofit so if you have checked it like um retrofit so here we'll be having this get and then we'll be having again like uh, post okay so whatever you are fetching the data depends on that you have to use the annotations so get annotation is only used when you're getting the data something like this what you are doing now we're getting this image and we are getting this name so using that uh, for post we need to use post because we want to post something like a body maybe a response from the web and you want to throw that response back to the server to get the data or something something like a form or something like any registration something like whichever it needs to be posted to the server okay so though, though at that time we'll be using the post uh, we can use form URL encoded uh, only when we have fields like first name last name or like something like you know a date of birth or a, a, a form a form filling page in your screen where you have to send the fields respective to that and again we have multi part so there's a lot of things like uh, you can go ahead and check the documentation again I'll paste this link in the description and you can go ahead and go through this documentation for retrofit so right now we'll be using the interface here and uh, for this interface I'll be using add red get get and uh, what I'll get is uh, the endpoint which is marvel uh, how I'm getting this uh, if you check the URL of the response okay so that, that is our response and what was our URL our base URL is this which is the HTTPS whatever the name of the website slash demos slash this is the part of the query so without this query you don't get the data so you have the query then you get the entire response only this will not fetch you the entire data so if you wipe out the last query and this and give it you won't see any data here okay so that's how we get it now uh, i'll assign a function to this because i want to get this in the repository again so I'll name it as get heroes. So here I'll assign a call. So the call is like a retrofit call. And uh, what we want to call is like the list of that. So we have a list of our data class. And we have to design this data class. So in data package in the model, we want to create one new Kotlin class and name it as heroes data. 
in here i want to name it as a data class heroes data inside this i want to add the data class so i want to add the name as string and i want to name it as real name so these things i'm just using it from the response if you if you observe uh here so if you observe here in our json response viewer we have all these fields so we want to add all these fields to your data class you can't just you know uh, change all this so if you are not familiar with uh, the kotlin uh, to data class converter that's a plugin so if you want to just copy this and you want to just go here create new so this kotlin data class file from json so this is one plugin that i downloaded you can use it also you can click on that and you can paste the entire response and you can name the class like data okay and you can generate it so it will generate you all the data for that so from from the from the uh, json response you get the entire model class but for now i'll just uh, uh, name it for this so i'll just manually write it down so so here we have that now uh what i'm gonna have is like val team string and then val if first appearance and yeah that's a string again and then val created by again that's again a string and you have val publisher it's a string and we have the image so image url and the string type and then val bio that's the string again okay so that's our data class so we have all the fields added as per the json and now after this and so we'll be adding this uh, to our api so here we'll be adding the okay heroes data that we have here and we'll call this and we get the data so that's how the api works this is the get method now in our repository also we have the retrofit service we want to just alt enter this and you get all that so you get okay so we want to add this retrofit service to get this method so this method you're going to call it in the view model so in our view model here now we have the repository so we want to extract that now in the view model class uh, we want to what we're going to do is uh, we want to give the name of the a list maybe something like heroes list and i want to use a mutable live data so what's a mutable live data there are two types of live data the one is one is the live data this which is a uh, live data because that you can change the properties the, what they hold is uh like you can add the list to it and it gets changed so that's like whatever the data is coming from the web gets uh changed but mutable live data is like you can't change the data whatever is getting from the web that is static and it you cannot uh, have the new data uh, refreshed here so for that we'll be using uh, mutable live data and inside this uh, i'll be using the list of heroes data which you have used in the model the data class so i'll alt enter this now here you have to add this parenthesis because mutable live data is like a method which you're having a life cycle and it expects some kind of data function okay now here we'll be adding one more uh, object of error message because you want to get any errors and so we want to check okay if it is any error we'll be using another immutable live data for this and that's this type of string now that function that you have designed so we'll be using that so get all heroes that function inside this function i want to use the response object to collect the data from the repository and i'll use the response object 
to nq okay so nq is like um whatever you are uh getting the data from um the retrofit object or the retrofit class that gets a callback so the callback is type of um a method which gets a success or a failure okay so that's how you use callbacks so call there are a lot of callbacks if you see in android uh, there are a lot of callbacks you have drawables virtual display all that types so what we need is uh, the retrofit which will be using the last one and inside this uh, heroes data will be adding the callbacks so there are two types of callbacks if you see here the red bulb you can implement the members of response and failure in this to do part we want to add the whatever the you know the response you want to get from the list so we have the heroes list on the top so we want to post the value so inside this you want to post the value what you want to post is the response from the body so body is the json body which you have got from this you want to post the entire thing into the list and you want to get the list similarly in the on failure so we want to get the error message on dot we want to post the value again and we want to get something which is a message so t is nothing but the throwable class so it's like a throw the error and gives us so it's something like uh whatever using in a try catch block exception that's the exception which is a message type here we'll close the parenthesis and that makes our nq ready now uh, let's create our view model factory and so inside the data class create new kotlin class and then we name it as view model factory okay so what's a view model factory now uh, view models have been using this factory designs when they have been invented because the factory designs basically what helps is uh it uses the view model factory class again with the constructor so in that way you can directly instantiate the repository here so in that way you don't need to worry about your repositories are getting the data or not so you can always check it it's only because uh your repositories need to be uh, aligned with your testing so it minimizes a lot of um, boilerplate code uh for that so that's the reason we are using so we'll make the constructor with private val repository object from the repositories class and uh, on the return type or what it gives back is the view model provider which is the factory the design factory design and inside this uh, we'll override uh, the method of a function type which is a type t and it gives the view model and what we do is we create the model class okay of type class t and here we return the t method or the t function again and inside this we okay we need to add uh, our return type so what you're going to return from this method okay return if what you're going to return if okay model class dot is assignable from so if the model class is assignable so we want to use the model class that you have designed heroes view model and i'm going to name it as java so in that way how we scope resolution operator we use to use a java and convert it into java class and then inside this we're gonna use the view model and i'm gonna give that to the repository as a method t or a function t so that is how we do it else what do we do it we throw a illegal argument exception okay so illegal argument exception what we're gonna what is gonna be the exception okay view model is not found simple so why we are doing this a view model factory is going to be beneficial when you need to check if a view model is properly loaded into your application once the application is loaded or it's been uh, on the life cycle of on create 
So view model lifecycle I've explained you in the last lecture. If you have gone through that, you will understand why you are using a view model pattern. The entire lifecycle depends on the view model. It doesn't matter if you're changing the orientation. View models never get destroyed. So that is the way how we use it. Now in our repository, uh, will be okay. So once we are done with that, uh, we need to use this method. So let's go to our adapter and I'll create adapter now. So we'll use a new Kotlin class file named as heroes adapter. That will be our adapter for our recycler view. So here, what we'll do is I'll assign it to our recycler view. And then I'll give that to the adapter. Inside this, I'll hold the main view holder. Okay. So main view holder is using that. And inside this, again, I'll write whatever I need to fetch the data from. So I'll use an object and I'll use a mutable list. So we're using a mutable list. A mutable list is nothing but an inline function, which is using a mutable list of data. That's a collections of a Kotlin collections. If you're not familiar with Kotlin collections, you can study your Kotlin collections. It's basically a list of data or a list of class which you are using it. So what you're using a mutable list of is of type hero, uh, heroes data that you have got. Here we'll be uh, again using one method, uh, a function, which is set uh, heroes list. We're going to set this list. Okay, so we're going to use heroes, some object, and I'm going to give a list of heroes data. Okay, and in that way, uh, we're going to use this this we're going to context this heroes and when we're going to use it like uh, heroes dot two mutable list so that is like giving this object to this list and getting the data back so that's you're setting this method only in the activity for that we're using a set method okay setter or getter something like that so in java here we'll be using it in this manner now inside this also we'll be using notify data set changed. So in recycler view, why we use notify data set changed? It's only because if you want to refresh the data and get it back uh, with the new data, so we're using that. Now um, next we'll be using the on create method. So this is the on create view holder. So in on create view holder, we'll be using again the main view holder. Inside this, I'll use an inflator object. So inflators are basically to inflate from layout inflators uh, uh, library. So layout inflators are used in recycler views because a view is like a container. So you want to uh, inflate that, and we want to inflate this from the parent dot context. We'll be using again a binding object here as we have used in the main activity and we'll bind this layout to the uh, heroes layout binding dot inflate and here i'll be using inflator okay and we'll be using the parent and i will put that as false so that's how we do it Okay, here we'll be using recycler layout binding. So this name comes uh, similar to whatever you have designed your layout name. So recycler view layout. So that's where recycler view layout binding. So that this part of the name comes from the layout what you have designed. Okay. Now um, here we'll be returning our main view holder. and we'll give the binding object with it okay so
okay now here we'll be adding one more override that is uh, on bind view holder so here we'll add the view holder class for binding so once we create this inflator the one next part is to bind the view so we'll be using a object named hero here we'll be putting as heroes and uh, we'll be getting the position okay that's why i'm indexing it in an array because we're going to get the indexes of all the datas and we'll be using the holder class to bind okay so holder dot binding dot and then we'll be using okay text view we'll be using the text view here dot text so why we're using this because we need to show the name of the uh text of the image right as i mentioned one more thing we want to use glide here because uh, i have not mentioned that so glide is something we want to fetch the image so using glide library so we want to use this four dependencies one is implementation com github bump tech glide one is android x app compat one is recycler views and one is annotation processor so basically uh, glide uses this and the bump tech annotation processor so these two libraries you need to use for glide okay so we'll be using that here now so glide dot width and we'll be passing the holder dot item view dot context we're using the context for the glide and what we'll load is uh, we'll load the image url okay and where you want to load it is into Holder dot binding dot okay image view so we want to add that so after this we'll be one we're using one more override called get item count so get item count is basically used to get the size of the list so we have to return the size of the list and then only we'll get all the data in our screen so like that so heroes is a list we used and that size we want to get that now in the bottom we want to add the um, main view holder as i've also already mentioned here so and to use the main view holder okay and inside this what we're going to use is the binding and then we'll be using the heroes uh, sorry the recycler view layout bonding that we have already done that and what will be returning here is recycler view dot view holder and we'll pass the binding dot root in that way we are attaching it okay we're attaching the uh, adapter to the main view holder okay that that's how you do it so once that is done so we need to uh, now go to the um, main activity uh, for uh, designing our template okay so we need to check if sometimes the id is not matching so we can go and check the layout whatever the text view so here we don't have an id so we need to mention the id as text view so in that way you don't have this it will not complain the industry will not complain the binding is not found so in that way you use it okay now uh, we need to go to our main activity here so in the main activity uh, as we have already done with the recycler view next what we need to do is we need to add uh, the bindings okay so for the view model now we need to use a late in it var and, and use the view model object here that you have already done uh, and use the heroes view model okay next uh, i want to use retrofit service so i'm to use the private var retro sorry uh, private val retrofit service and here i want to use the retrofit service that i've already used and and to get the instance of it 
Okay. Okay. Now I want to also use uh, the adapter. So val adapter equals. Uh, I want to use the heroes adapter that you have already done. Okay. Next uh, here I want to use this after the set content view we are to use the binding okay so after that we have to use it is the view model object and then here we have to pass the view model provider so view model providers are basically why we use this is we need to set the view model to the observer life cycle that i've already mentioned during the last class so that uses a owner which is a factory pattern or from the view model factory we'll be using that so we'll be using a view model okay factory for this and inside the ViewModel factory, I want to use the repository that you've already designed. Inside this, I want to pass the retrofit service. And what I want to get from this is okay, dot get. What I want to get from this is the view model back and convert that to a Java class. And then after this, I want to uh bind it okay binding dot uh, recycler view dot adapter and use that way equals adapter so i want to bind that way and then i want to use the view model dot okay that list that we have designed so we're going to use the list here so i'm going to use the heroes list dot observe and we want to observe and it, what we want to use is like the observer pattern so the observer class is basically we are using it here and in the observer uh what we're going to do is we want to create the log okay so what is what is a log log is basically whenever you are mentioning it uh in the log cat so you are checking this tag okay this tag is basically or whatever you are going to debug the application so in that way we're going to check this text and we're going to check that so tag is basically something like uh, you can put it as a string like um, main activity or something like that so if you write that you can find the logs in the log cat here in the down now on the on create uh, i want to pass okay what i want to pass is uh, the value so in kotlin whatever you want to when we want to get a value you can pass dollar and it to it uh, so in that way you get okay whatever you're uh, whatever is basically uh, going to be observed here the data it will be logged here the enter response is going to be logged with the observer pattern now after this you're going to set the data so adapter dot set okay so we have the set okay set this set function that we have used here so if you go to your repository uh we have done that in our okay uh, adapter in adapter we have created this so we can name this as heroes list so this method we'll be using it in our main activity so we'll be naming it as set heroes list in this uh what we'll be doing is will uh, set this to the it so it is basically uh, the scope function for the entire list to be set after that is done so we'll use the view model object again and we'll pass the error message so if that is uh, if it is failing if the data is not there so we'll observe again that thing and here we'll use the observer class uh, sorry the observer pattern and inside this we'll observe okay so the view model dot get all heroes so this method remember we have used it in our uh repository that repository that we are talking about so that repository we all already have this so we have that and okay retrofit service okay why is it complaining let's see so retrofit service has it okay i have not designed the retrofit right so that's why so uh the retrofit service we need to design now retrofit model uh was holding that get method 
so in the heroes api what i have designed is like uh, the retrofit uh, part so what i'll do is i'll copy this entire thing i don't need to use that so in here in the retro uh, retrofit service class i'll be pasting that and here in the down uh, i'll use a companion object the companion object are basically singleton class in kotlin so here we'll be designing the retrofit the converter pattern First, I'll use a retrofit service and I'll pass a retrofit service for this and I'll, I'll nullify it globally. Next, I'll put a get instance out of this. So I want to get this back in my main activity. So that's why I'm using that. In the retrofit service class, uh, I want to check, okay, if the retrofit service is equals null means if that is null so we'll return okay singleton class if you do not know companion object you know singleton class singleton class is basically the object there's only one object that returns a one instance of it so there's no multiple instances you can create out of a companion object so that's why we're using only one instance of retrofit service class which we'll be using in our main activity so that is why we're using a single companion object or singleton class in here i'll be using the retrofit object and i'll create it using a retrofit okay retrofit dot builder and uh, after this i'll pass the base url okay the base url will be this which you have already seen okay this one so then this much is the base url so we'll use that next uh, we'll be using our converter factory as i mentioned so converter factory and there are a lot of converter factories we'll be using a json converter factory for this and we'll pass dot create for this and then dot build that is the way how you use retrofit service so retrofit service again needs to be using the retrofit dot create in creating the retrofit class okay service class dot java so that's how we and now we're going to return it okay so that's how we're using our sync companion object we're gonna make it nullified so there is not null uh, operation and null safety operator is used for that so we are returning one object out of the retrofit service class and we're checking if it is null uh, then we'll build the class here now in our heroes repository we'll add the get heroes so that coming from our interface that you have designed for the get in the main activity uh, we have already the retrofit instance and that's how we are done with this application let's check it out everything works fine before that go to your manifest and use this uh, permissions method for internet so without this uh, your internet, uh, internet won't come because you need the internet permissions to be enabled to check the data from the web uh, to consume the responses from the web so that's mandatory um so first of all uh this is my device so let's run this application and check if it works fine okay something is crashing let's check what is that okay okay so our late net property binding has not been initialized okay okay so in main activity we have not used the binding okay let's go to our main activity and see where we have made the mistake okay 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 so binding uh we have used that binding okay let me for a view model do you mean binding so there we have it okay adapter okay fine so on create we're using that okay so we have not used the binding here right so um we need to use that so we need to use the binding object and we need to give it activity main binding to inflate our uh inflator so that's our layout inflator Without this, your view won't be inflated. That's 
that's one thing you need to make sure you have it okay we are not getting the data okay fine okay um one more thing i need to check if your properties have uh, this jetifier enabled and your android x to be true so that needs to be checked again and also you need to check this um, if everything is okay so we have our adapter or set heroes list it depending down okay what is the error we're having Okay, we are not getting the data. Okay, so expecting binder but got null. Okay, so that was the reason. Okay, okay, so we're not getting the data, right? So that is the thing. Let's check it out where we have made the mistake. Okay. Heroes list. So, so set heroes list. Search. Okay. And this is the way how you do it. Okay, there. So there is a problem okay so here what we have got the data is like the binding dot root was not set we are not setting this set content view binding dot root that's the reason we are not getting it so we need to always check if after the inflator we need to check this binding dot root is enabled or not so without that you won't get the data so that's our zagler view we have the image and we have all our data if you see there is any gap between the image and the text what you need to do is simple you need to go to your layout the recycler view layout and to make it as wrap content for the height so once you do that uh, your view will be properly aligned to each of them if you see here yeah so that's how you would do it all right so hope you like this video so that was pretty much about mvvm how we do it uh, how we use uh, view model factory patterns and how we get the data using retrofit from the retrofit service class how we get the data using a companion object how we build the retrofit object with the json converter factory and how we use a view model to consume the data and throw it back again to the repository using a repository class so that's how it's done so hope you enjoy this video guys so uh, do like share and subscribe and uh, wait for more videos to come uh, if you have not hit the bell icon till now so do hit it you won't miss any notifications of my new videos. Thank you and uh, take care.